Hi everyone, Sonia here and you're watching Pouring with Sonia. So I did this tray and I guess I'll have to uh, post my uh, original pour for this background. This is my Tree of Life ring pour and it seems so purple when you first do it, but it dries kind of like this darker cherry wood type finish, which I love for my Tree of Life. But the reason I wanted to do an actual video instead of a hyperlapse of this is because I'm trying a brand new, never tried it before, um, s adhesive size. So I tried this um, PBO Mixtion Relief. And so, because there's a lot of little intricate parts in here, what I normally use, to be honest, I use the Mona Lisa Speedball Adhesive. It's very runny, very liquidy. And I put it in this fine line applicator bottle and put it on. And then I use like a tool to like, you could use a pencil, a pen. I have like, um, let me see. Sorry, I don't, I wasn't really planning on showing what I usually use but didn't use but I'll put it on this is very runny it's almost like water this at um, Mona Lisa adhesive I use that for everything um, and then I go in and I use this little this is like a clay working tool I bought them and like like there's a whole bunch of clay work and I'll go in and kind of um, zhuzh I want to say or smudge or zhuzh the edges or the lines that I want with this but I'm almost out of this, um, and I have to order some more, and I've got a bunch of trays I'm working on, so I thought, I ordered this a while ago, I'd never tried it, I gave it a try today, I'm almost a little reluctant, because <laughs> not all adhesive sizes are created equal, I have learned, um, but I thought I would give this a go. So, it comes out, it's got a nice, let's see, a nice kind of a fine line applicator, like tip, and it's very thick. So it's like a paste almost. So I was able with these little tiny spaces, I have my little stencil I traced out with my silver um, Sharpie. And then I wanna put my adhesive size on top of that. And with such intricate detail, I thought this might be fun, a fun experiment, but I hope it, I mean, I got finger cramps by the time I was done because I was squeezing so hard, zhuzhing it around. Hopefully it works well because I'm just hopeful. So I'm giving this a go. I'm gonna give this like a review. Um, really, I thought I would go through much more of it than I did, I didn't. Um, for this is, I put down a lot. This is a big 12 inch stencil and I only went through like this much of the tube, okay? Like from there to there, like an inch of the tube. So I can still use this for a lot more. So I got, first of all, I'm pleased with how much um, I'm left with and how sturdy it held up over everything. Like it was very thick, like a, a thicker glue uh, paste. And then it dried clear, which is nice. So I know once it's dried clear, there's one little spot that I added some of this fine line to. It was the first one. And I put this fine line, um, really glue the, the um, speedball Mona Lisa on top of this to fill it in because I thought it might be getting too like thick and pasty, but I didn't do that anywhere else. But that looks a little bit creamy, but it's been like over six hours that I've let it dry, so. I'm gonna assume it's ready to go. So let's just give this a go. Gosh, I hope I, I'm not gonna regret this. I have some um, multicolored leafing flakes. I love it because there's little bits of pink and green and blue, gold, copper. I don't know if you can see all the different colors in here. A little bit of purple. Like I just love this. There's a little bit of orange there. So this is one of my favorites for like octopus, tree of life. So I got all these flakes, I love flakes, um, and I'm just gonna kinda pour this down on here. Oh, 
All right, that's way too much, but I've got my little collector cup here. So when I'm done, I'll take my excess, I'll put it in my little collector cup, and then when I get down to the nitty gritty, I will just, if I need more, I'll pour this collector's cup onto it. So I'm gonna now start with my hand and just kind of rub this all over. I hope this sizing works well. I'm a little nervous. Never used it before. You know, I like my tried and true stuff, uh, products, but I thought I'd give this a go. So I'm gonna rub around and rub around and rub around. So I'm really just pressing it down with my hand right now. Oh, I didn't get the big orangey piece that I wanted. I was excited about. Let me move this around a little bit. So I'm really just using my hand in circular motions right now to press this onto this gold leafing flake onto the surface of where I've applied all the glue. And now what I'm going to do is take my hand, wipe around this area, and just kind of scrape it together. I'm going to look, make sure I've got some coverage. Oh, it looks like I'm missing some there some glue. I didn't get quite out to the edges. And now I'm going to take all this excess. I could put it right back into my bag if I wanted to. I just keep it in the cup. So you see I'm just kind of gathering. This is the gross. I'm going to call this the macro or the gross um, gathering stage. All right, so I used my hand to put that down there. Oh, she's pretty. Isn't that pretty? I love all the different colors in here. Now I'm going to take, it's really just like a, a makeup dauber, like one of the, the sponge makeup foams that you use. And I'm gonna go right down here to really, really kind of burnish this on. Oh, wait, I didn't use my, wait, first, <laughs> let me get my steps in order here. The first thing I like to do is go in with my gilding brush. So with my brush, I go around, and this kind of helps me get some of the definition in there. Like, see how it broke up this little area here? It really helps me create the separation between things. If you got a lot of fine detail, this brush is fantastic. And this is an actual, this is the slow food group. I mean, it's, so I'm gonna focus on this area here. See if I can't work out what's the, the definition between those two leaves and branch. I got a little bit, I think I'm gonna need to scrape. So while I'm looking at it, I've got this little, this is another clay working tool just a little like scraper and I just want to scrape the tiniest bit of definition in here very lightly there we go this brush will do a pretty good job of defining you can see how I'm getting a little bit I'm getting a lot of like, I'm gonna call it chaff off of here now. Just by going around in little circular motions. There's a couple spots I'm not real happy with where the glue retreated inside of my lines. It is multicolored, so I'm not even sure I'm gonna go back and touch it up. I could though, I mean, got a little, little bit of my silver leafing there and there there, there. For the most part, I covered the lines where I feel with my fine line applicator with this, if I have my little tool, I'm going around and I'm filling in those edges. I really made sure I was trying to do that with this, but I it did retreat in a little bit in a couple of spots. So that would be one thing. Um, if I'm reviewing it, did retreat in a little bit. But also, she's, I have so much detail here. Um, 
I even have some 3D effects, which I really kind of like on this particular project. So by and by right now, I'm really happy with this um, very, this product. If I do it again, when I use this again, I'll be sure to really, there's just a couple spots where I feel like the line um, didn't get completely covered over. But you know what? It's alcohol ink. A Sharpie is nothing more than alcohol ink, so I think I'll grab a Q-tip and try and erase those uh, silver lines. So now I burnished it. I burnished it first with my hand. Now I've burnished it with the um, brush. And then I would normally go, see, and look at how much I got off. Do you see this right down here? This kind of, that's all I got off with the brush. Like the really fine detail in between. So now I'm gonna scoop that out into my little cup. I missed some here. All right. Now I'm gonna take my makeup sponge and go in and just kind of go over the top of it. It kind of polishes it up a little, pushes it down a little more. Okay, really am happy with the detail I have on this. And the um, the metal leafing stuck really well to this sizing, so I'm happy about that. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna do a little bit of touch up. I'm gonna take one of my simple, I love these cleansing facial wipe, uh, cleansing facial wipes. It removes water waterproof mascara, but it doesn't have any oil in it. And so I use this to clean like anything that has silicone in it. And I'm gonna come around here. So I prepped this surface with a little bit of this, I'm gonna say similar colored eyeshadow to um, absorb any oils, anything that was sticky. So, so you can see this right here that I'm getting up is not my paint, it's the eyeshadows that I laid down to keep the sizing or the metal leaf from sticking to places. Um, Cause sometimes that's half the battle with this metal leaf. It sticks where it's not supposed to, right? If you've ever used it and had like metal leafing stick everywhere else, as well as where you apply the sizing, you're like, what? Well, so that eyeshadow in a similar color will help with that. So I've wiped off now the eyeshadow and the little extra flakes. What I'm gonna do now, if you'll just wait one second for me, I'm gonna pause it and be right back. Um, I'm gonna go get a Q-tip and a little bit of just 70% alcohol, because I think I'm out of 90%, and go where I thought those lines are exposed, where the Sharpie is showing, and I didn't do a good job of pushing my sizing out. I'm gonna try and see if I can't lift some of that off because Sharpie will come off with just alcohol. So hang on and I'll be right back and we'll see how that goes. Okay, I actually do have some 91% alcohol. So I'm gonna pour a little bit of that into this little kind of medicine cup dispenser. Just a little bit, okay? And there's only a few places where I feel like I didn't cover my um, outline from the stencil. So I'm going to take my Q-tip and just dip it in there. And like right here, I feel like there's some Sharpie line exposed. Oh, I don't want that much. Let me squeeze that out a little. <laughs> Not trying to lift the paint. Just get that Sharpie edge off. It is going to lift a little bit of paint. I'm not going to lie. Um, so let's see. I just don't want it to be such a sharp, sharpie line. I'm not trying to lift too much of the gold leafing off though, and I feel like maybe I am, and it might not be worth it to do this. Okay. Huh. Because look, I'm lifting paint off. Maybe right here, there's a really big, sharp silver line. 
but you know what? It's lifting all that gold leafing off. So I don't think it's worth it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a little bit of my fine line applicator here. And I oftentimes get air bubbles. So that didn't work out. It was lifting my leafing off. I don't think it's really worth it. I'm going to, I get air bubbles at first. So I'm going to go off to the side. Just get the air bubbles out of the tip. I'm going to come in here so a tiny bit. This is irritating to me that I have to do this. But also, I don't want the, I don't like the fact that I lift it up. Okay, so now I've fixed that. I'm going to come around here where I don't feel like I covered it well and just come in just a little bit. Uh, if I start nitpicking, I'm going to get irritated with myself. I don't know that it's worth it for me to try and fix this. Little tiny imperfections. Looks pretty good down here. A little bit there. Mm, a little bit here. Alright, you're seeing me being nitpicky. Those are the major places where I thought, I'm not happy. There's a little bit, but it's it's a silver Sharpie, and this is a multicolored. So I'm going to put my lid back on here. Ugh. All right. And now I um, really only poured this tray like three, four days ago, so should have probably let it cure more. Maybe that paint want to come up, but also with 91%, some would have. I'm going to dry this. So I've got my little air dryer thing here. I'm not going to have you sit and torture, be tortured through this. So I'll be back in a few minutes after I've dried it. Okay. So I've dried my new little kind of tiny outlines. I'm just grabbing the tiniest bit of my metal leaf and rubbing it along. But here, now the thing you need to be careful of with your sizing is, um, if it should dry clear. If it's still cloudy, then it's still a little damp. And if that happens, it's not that your sizing won't stick, your leafing won't stick, it will still stick, but it'll be a little cloudy. And I don't even know where all I put this, so I'm just kind of putting some down where I think I might have laid it, because it's drying a little clear now. I'm just kind of going over this. With my fingers. Oh, I think I definitely have some like it's kind of a red color here. I like that. Maybe that'll stick to it. Just adding a little bit of this leafing back where I outlined tiny spit to cover over some of that. So that's better. For sure, that's better. This stick here, part of the branch, better. Good. So that was worth it. So, a few extra minutes to try and get all that on, and now I have to rebrush it, redo everything, but that's okay. in here. Oh, I don't think I definitely had some. Let me grab this. I know I had some down here I wanted to cover up too on this little root here. Okay. Alright. 
going a little easy here with my burnishing brush, not too hard. Because I usually let that, <laughs> that glue sit for like six hours or overnight. I really am rushing it here with the air dryer, this Revlon air dryer. Oops. That makes me happier though. I know I'm a little bit nitpicky, but I want it to be right, you know? All right, let me grab this little bit, this cup here. I'm gonna grab my same little simple sensitive skin wipe and come here and I'm not trying to get the eyeshadow up now, but just these little extra flakes. Which just will pretty much pick up C. I'm picking up the flakes there. Now, I've got one little section over on this one where some of the, because I wiped off that um, eyeshadow, which keeps it from sticking. So I've got a little bit stuck here. I'm going to try and scrape some of that off very gently. Because I don't want that leaf going wonky on me. So I scraped that little bit off. Now we're going to come in and resin it. The thing that's nice with the um, metal leafing, so you can just resin it right away when you're happy with the end product. The other thing I did while I was kind of drawing that was go in and scrape. Like, is there a little bit of definition I want here? Because the glue came together so maybe I might scrape a little there and wipe a little there so that's kind of what I did I was looking over my piece I want some real good definition here and so I think I'm happy with this now and I'm ready to resin all right it's all clean I have like three and a half minutes of resin mixing for that to dry. So I'm going to do about eight ounces of resin for this 15 inch tray. And I've got these beautiful graduated cups. So far, I'm going to say I really like this. So the fact that I had to redo some parts was my user error. It was my first time using this. I didn't push it out far enough. Where it retreated in, I need to go back over it. But um, I like it. It's easier um, than this really liquidy, very fluid um, for this really high detail. So I'm going to show you. I use that fluid fine line applicator. See how much bigger? This is a, a turtle tray I just did. And I just put the resin on it. But those are pretty big. There's not a lot of intricate work there, right? I mean, a little bit. I need to make sure that I don't join the shell pattern together but I, that's fine for my um, liquid application here but I'm trying to get a lot of detail here and I really liked that I did okay so oh I already have a cup the first part I'm going to pour in, I'm not going to have you watch me mix it all, but I'm going to do the hardener first. You always put your hardener in first because it's more, it's a little bit thinner than the um, resin itself. So I'm going to do four ounces, which is right about there. And then I'm going to do four ounces. This is a one-to-one. -one. I love this. Um, it was called faux rizzle, and now I think it's something different. <laughs> Countertop epoxy, I think, is they merge together. But this is their FX Black Label, which is, um, it's less for people that have a hard time with the fumes or the smell of it. It's supposed to be completely safe. I know no resin really is completely safe, right? But 
this is one that has re this really they really take the time to make sure that they're trying to address some of the allergens that people have all right so four and four one to one the hardener went in first the resin goes in second I'm gonna add maybe a little bit of glitter because I'm a glitter freak okay <laughs> I just love mixing glitter. I don't know though, it's so pretty without it. Do I need glitter? I got a whole bunch here. I got a bunch. I got some gold from No, I think I, this once I will do without. <laughs> All right, I'm going to now set my timer. Three minutes, 15 seconds. I'm gonna say go. I'm not gonna have you watch the whole time. I'll see you in a few seconds or minutes. I'm just going to start mixing this up. I'll, oh, no, I didn't want four minutes. All right. Always measure it. You may think, oh, it's clear. It's fine. But always measure it. So uh, time it, I should say. So I'm going to see you in three and a half minutes. Hold on. Just real quick while I'm mixing, make sure when you're mixing your resin, you scrape the sides, right? So I'm going to make sure I'm scraping the sides, scraping the bottom, not going too fast because you don't want to create a bunch of air bubbles. And then I scrape my mixer too. So I want to always get, make sure that I don't have any big, there's no part A or part B that's sticking to the side or sticking to the bottom or sticking to my mixing tool. I'm always just going in a nice little S-shape pattern back and forth, not too fast, not trying to create a ton of bubbles, but I'm scraping along the side here. Four scrapes, then I'll scrape along the bottom. And then I will scrape my tool. And that's just good mixing scents for resin. All right, I'll see you in another couple minutes. Okay, so my timer's done. Turn that off. Okay. And now I think it's a perfect time for a little bit of a, a margarita break. I mix up a nice little peach margarita while I was mixing up uh, resin or, you know, actually I mixed it up before I came up here, but I'm going to just say cheers to you. Mm -hmm. Yummy, yummy. All right. So now let me pull this back down into full frame for you and let's just let it rip. I love watching resin go down and add that dimension. Now the thing that I don't want to do, I was very careful to scrape my glass all along, right? While I was mixing, I'd scrape, 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 scrape. I'd scrape along the side. I'd scrape along the bottom. I'd scrape my stick. But when you're pouring it out, I know that resin's expensive and you want to make every last single drop count, but Honestly, don't go in and scrape this because it's so important that you have your your uh, proportions just right that if you have just a little bit of extra part A and not enough part B, it's going to dry tacky. And then you're going to have to mix up a whole new eight ounces after it dries, you know, after it cures for two days or a day and re-pour it. Nobody wants that. So I'm just I'm as tempted as I am to go around and scrape this out and get every last little bit of resin. I'm not going to do that because I don't want it to dry tacky and have some part of this somewhere in there that didn't get mixed properly. So just pour it out. Let that extra, you know, half of an ounce in there go to waste is all I'm saying. Oh. My trash can's covered up. All right. I know this is a long one if you've been with me because I didn't think it would be. I didn't think I'd have to do touch-up. Wasn't sure, though. 
I'm going to torch this for bubbles before I go and tilt it out. Quick pass back and forth. Don't stay in one spot for too long with your resin. Keep it moving. All right, that's enough. And now I want to make sure I don't have any resin on my gloves when I pick this up, which I don't, which is good. So I'm going to start. And for this, I don't care. I can just go around in a circle. It's not going to actually create a pattern or anything. I'm just going to go get this resin all the way up to the edges where my paint went. That's it. She's covered. I'm going to put her back down. I love the vibrancy that that brings. Oh no, now you got this big ring. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna torch again. It's pretty, y'all. Ah, oh, I love these colors. The colors from this tree ring, tree of life pour. I do quite a few of these. Um, you wouldn't think it. This is dioxinine purple, prism violet, quinoctrogone magenta. Then I mix the quinoctrogone, I can't say that right now, especially after, this is like my second margarita, y'all. So quinoctrogone, I don't know, I'm not saying it right. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> if you've made it this long into the video, you're laughing with me. That magenta mixed with the cadmium yellow light hue to make like an orange. And then just the cadmium yellow light hue. You wouldn't think that, but it dries, the, the dioxinine in the prism dries so dark that it creates this kind of cherry wood background. I'll bring you down for a close up. It's just really pretty. So I, I've got the kind of, I faced my stencil. This is a stencil. Um, like, which way do I want? I kind of wanted this knot of the wood to show up. This is just a ring pour. And if I turned it any other way, that got covered over by the leaves or the whatever. And I liked having that show. So I love you guys. It looks pretty cool. Look at it. <laughs> Although I'm sure I'm partial to my work more than you are, but... I love this um, multicolored leafing on this as well because I like the little flecks of, there's yellow, right? There's yellow and orange, green, red, copper, gold. It has some blue and I don't see any blue or purple in this, but sometimes you'll get some blue and purple flakes in there too. So I just think it's a really fun leafing color for Something like this. I use that mostly for my Tree of Life and octopus. Because I feel like the octopus is kind of camouflaged. So there she is. She turned out pretty well. I'm just going to torch it one more time. Cover it with my little food tent here. And I've got ready and waiting in the wings. So I can... Um, I'll see, I already have a hair. So I'm going to fish out that hair. Do you see that little hair? I'm going to fish that out with a little skewer here because I've got two dogs doesn't take long she's Luis but I will torch it one more time and then cover it with my dust cover my little food tent and then we'll let her cure and we'll be done and ready thank you everyone for sticking with me to see how I do this I usually do these on hyperlapse but I wanted to go through the process with you. And this process happened to take a little bit longer because I had to go back in and fix those areas where my Sharpie was showing through. Um, but so thanks for sticking with me. I hope you enjoyed this. Learned a couple trips about uh, tricks. <laughs> Cheers to another peach margarita. <laughs> mm. And I just dribbled. <laughs> you know how the ice crashes down? That's what just happened. But I hope you learned a few tips and tricks to metal leafing. You got to see the process for it um, and kind of what I went through um, to get this beautiful end result. And until we meet again, have fun painting. Oh 
my <laughs> gosh you guys i am having a moment here where i'm having a little trouble talking and i'm just trying to say goodbye to you i would love it if you would like this give it a thumbs up subscribe to me that'd be even better but even if you don't, I just hope that you learned something from this. Um, it's so beautiful. It really is beautiful. I'm going to have to say I really like this product right here. This, um, oh, let me try and, can I, yeah, okay, focused right there. Can you focus? Thank you. This is like a nice thick adhesive sizing for your metal leafing, which for this kind of a detail is fantastic. For my turtle here that I've got under the tent, this really liquidy stuff that I put in um, a fine line applicator works fine. I just, I, I outline it, then I zhuzh it with this little tool here or a pencil, a dull pencil will be fine. But for this kind of detail work, this was great. I would say definitely thumbs up for this and, um, I like it a lot. I was a little worried. And look, it gave me a little bit of texture, too. I don't know if you can see it. Like, a little bit of ribbing here. So, I was a little worried about it at first. And then I'm like, no, I'm going to like that little bit of uh, the 3D. It's a little bit thicker. This is very um, fluid and smooth. You know, my smooth little turtle shells. There's nothing going on there too exciting other than just the beauty but um this gave me a little bit of definition i wasn't sure if it was going to dry flat or not but i've got a little bit you can see maybe you see how i've got in my tree roots where they were a little bit bigger pieces i could have used the um liquidy stuff for that because it wasn't so detailed but look i got some real kind of 3d dimension with that which i kind of like 3D dimension here. I've got a little bit of like ribbing right along there and along here. So I like it. If that's the effect, it's a, it's a pretty cool effect. 